the most famous paintings of Joan Miro. In this video, we will see the most famous works of Miro. The Spanish artist of the Surrealism movement, most famous in the entire history of art. Blue Immersion Artwork by Joan Miro, from the year 1961. Starting in 1923, Joan Miro's work took on a different nuance, that of poetic freedom, which is expressed through the apparently chaotic arrangement of the elements in his compositions. It is not by chance, ever since he decided to go into nature to experience reality from a much more immediate level, more real than that of the hustle and bustle of the Spanish capital, at least, he allowed the romantic fibers of his artistic events to take on a categorical force in his style. Thirty years after moving to a little house in the middle of the Catalan countryside, however, he decides to experiment with other layers of essence, and flies to the United States to meet the abstract expressionists. It is then that he allows himself to be influenced by Rothko and Pollock, so diametrically different in execution, and despite this, with such similar harmonic axes, and the apparently dispersed nature of his composition is based on the currents of abstraction that prevailed in the new 50s York. During his stay in the United States, Miro knew how to adapt very well to the new limits that color was reaching, and he understood the spiritual level that they disrupted by facing the viewer so directly. This is why it is almost natural that, in 1961, he painted the Blau triptych, anesthetic synesthesia, impasto musicality, restrained color, static expressionism. The vastness of blue spreads out into a field of deep spirituality, like a drop that melts on the calm surface of an immense body of water. There are really few elements that burst into this almost absolute occurrence of blue, if anything, some black dots, a red line, a slender line. However, the composition is absorbing not because of these disruptive lines, but because of the dominant presence of blue, blue that consumes, blue that stands out, blue that assumes. Signs and Constellations in Love with a Woman Artwork by Joan Moreau, from the year 1941 One of the paintings that are part of the Constellation series painted by Miro between 1939 and 1941. In this series of 23 paintings we see Moreau's characteristic naive style, with which the artist seeks to delve into the depths of the human subconscious and offers us his particular vision of reality full of symbols and colors. This constellation represents exactly what its title says, a starry sky with its respective constellations, various symbols that form a kind of labyrinth formed by black lines and dotted with primary colors, Moroas famous birds and of course women, always treated by he looked like a creative and protective entity. Many see here an element of evasion and escape, since the reality of 1941 was not the most comfortable in Europe. According to the artist's grandson, Miro had to somehow escape from the barbarities that were being committed during the Second World War, and the only thing he could achieve was to escape through his art, and by looking at the sky. Somehow imagining that he was fleeing from that reality turned into a bird to later return to Earth and express in the form of symbols everything that could fit on a canvas. According to the artist himself, when I stand in front of a canvas, I never know what I am going to do, and I am the first surprised at what comes out. This is the color of my dreams. Artwork by Joan Miro, from the year 1925. Upon meeting the Parisian surrealists, a famished 30-something Miro expressed his desire to abandon conventional methods of painting. At that time, his painting Poesy series was born, which combines text with enigmatic symbols and reflects his interest in dreams and the subconscious, a goldmine for the artists of the time. Three elements float on this empty white canvas, the word photo, a stain of blue, and the phrase this is the color of my dreams. The black letters sit on nearly invisible pencil lines, like in a child's writing pad. Breton went so far as to affirm that Miro perhaps was the most surrealist of all of us. A surrealist in its purest form who captured better than anyone the automatic, the childish, the dreamlike, what lives in the depths of the unconscious. 
He was so individualistic that shortly after finishing this series of works, the differences within the group of surrealists became increasingly palpable, not only in the plastic arts, but also in the political sphere. Between the marks of transforming the world with politics and the Rambeau of doing it with poetry, Miro opted for the latter. Thus, as a free soul, he continued to develop his very personal art and influenced other artists with no specific affiliation, such as Magritte. Certainly works like The Betrayal of Images owe a lot to This is the Color of My Dreams. Man and Woman in Front of a Pile of Excrement Artwork by Joan Moreau, from the year 1935. In 1934, Spain was becoming an increasingly polarized social powder keg. The Surrealists, great premonitors, were the first to smell that something was going to happen soon, and among them, the child of the group, Joan Miro who declared. Unconsciously, I experienced the atmosphere of discomfort that is characteristic of when something serious is going to happen. Like before it rains, a heavy head, bad bones, and suffocating humidity. It was more physical than moral discomfort. He sensed a catastrophe and did not know what, it was the Spanish and world civil wars. I tried to represent this tragic atmosphere that tortured me and that I felt inside of me. Thus, Miro took a copper plate and painted a very dark painting on it, inappropriate for his childish and colorful style. It represented a man and a woman who seemed to stretch out their arms to get closer, without actually having contact. In the background, a mountain of shit looks like a monument in what is apparently Modroig del Camp. It is an example of Miro's wild paintings, which give a palpable bad feeling due to their intense and acid color, and that light, disturbing and nightmarish and intended to illustrate that atmosphere prior to the storm that was lived in Catalonia in the mid-1940s. 30s. The Hope of the Condemned to Death Artwork by Joan Moreau, from the year 1974 Salvador Puig Antic was 26 years old, he was an activist and anti-Francoist. In September 1973, he was arrested and accused of murdering a police sub-inspector during a shootout in which he was involved. The sentence of the Supreme Council of Military Justice was implacable, sentenced to death by the vile club method. An execution method that consisted of an iron collar, attached to a screw, with a ball at the end that was rotated by an executioner until causing the dislocation of the prisoner's neck. In most cases, death did not occur instantly since it depended on the physical strength of the executioner, making the agony of the condemned man long and tortuous. The conviction generated a huge movement of rejection, acquiring unprecedented relevance, the European Commission, high-ranking government officials and even the Vatican, in addition to massive demonstrations, tried to prevent the young man's sentence. But finally, Salvador Puig was executed in the provincial prison of Barcelona, where neither his three sisters, nor his parents, nor his lawyer could attend. Until the last moment, Puig Antic kept the hope of a commutation of the sentence. The passage of time confirmed that the Puig case was not only an aberration due to the inhumanity of the method chosen to execute him, but also because errors, contradictions and incompetence accumulated in the trial. Various investigations maintained that key evidence was even made to disappear and that the summary was altered to incriminate Puig. The same day his execution, Joe Miro painted in his honor, the hope of a condemned man. Miro, whose formal language is usually interpreted in a naive and trivial way, was an anti-Franco man and committed to his time, several times he expressed his feelings in the face of injustice with the tools at his disposal, painting. Three circles of great gestural force are abruptly interrupted, like Puig's life. The tragic atmosphere of some spots that change color, on a background full of splashes and dots like bullets, was Moroes' representation of the cruel execution of the last person sentenced to death by Garod in Spain. The Harlequin Carnival Artwork by Joan Moreau, from the year 1924 Example of the Surrealist era of Miro, 
and that swept the collective exhibition of the painter surrealist in Paris that year. Good news, as the artist was literally starving. That's probably why I saw things like this Carnival of the Harlequin, in which dreams, delirium and childhood memories are mixed. I tried to capture the hallucinations that the hunger that I was experiencing produced in me. It is not that I painted what I saw in my dreams, as Breton and his people used to say at the time, but rather that hunger produced in me a kind of transit similar to that experienced by Orientals. Miro captures in this oil painting a childish universe populated by numerous beings and objects. Toys that seem to move throughout the painting and give it a rhythm that is further marked by shapes and colors. Miro has not yet outlined even the essence, as he will do in his later work, but we can already see where he is going. At least she wouldn't go hungry again. The Morning Star Artwork by Joan Moreau, from the year 1940 Always faithful to his characteristic style, the Spanish painter, sculptor, engraver and ceramicist Joan Moreau, one of the greatest exponents of abstract surrealism, brings us a new work that seems to come directly from a dream, with its usual curved lines that delimit forms of flat colors, usually primary, on a background of a neutral color. The Morning Star belongs to the Constellation series, made up of 24 small paintings on paper, begun in varengeville sur mer in Normandy, shortly before the outbreak of the Second World War. After the invasion of the German troops, Miro is forced to return to Spain. This series reflects an intense process of introspection, and his intention to escape from the surrounding reality. The Morning Star represents the sky and the order of the cosmos, with weightless figures that symbolize the Earth and other celestial icons. All the works in the series are made in a 38 by 46 cm format, with a paper support that the artist moistened with gasoline and scrubbed until a surface with a rough texture was obtained. On it I applied the color, maintaining a transparency to create the desired final appearance. On this background color, Miro drew with pure colors to achieve contrast. In the constellations, the iconography wants to represent the entire order of the cosmos, the stars refer to the celestial world, the characters symbolize the earth and the birds are the union of both. Although the truth is that this sea of lines and colors is quite subjective when it comes to interpreting it. What are you looking at? That was all for today's video, tell us what you thought, and if you liked it, please give us your subscription and your like, this way you support the art community on YouTube. Until the next video, have a nice day.